Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what I'm going to be covering is how to basically make plants, so the plant element and just the basic properties for it. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff that needs to be covered so I'll try to break it up into the three sections that there are. So uh, to create a new element you're going to need to go and click on your mod elements page, click on the green plus icon and then scroll down where it says plant and then you want to select that and then you want to give it a registry name. Now this is uh, not displayed for the actual mod. Uh, this isn't the display name, but it's uh, basically the name for the, um, basically what things point to. It's, it's the ID for when you use the slash give command, things like that. Um, basically only English characters. Uh, you can use underscores, but it's not recommended. Um, because it will automatically do that when you're typing it out. So a general practice is just to use something like my plant and with this similar format and then it will basically group it all together. Now as you can see down here the registry name is my underscore plant. So that's basically how it's set up. It's just an easier way to actually see it in your workspace than having all the extra underscores and stuff. All right, so once you've done that, uh, click Create Plant, and then you're presented with a number of options. Uh, there are a few different uh, ones that you can actually create. So the most important thing is what kind of plant you want to create is there's a growable plant. This is similar to sugarcane. It will grow over time. Uh, you can select that one by clicking the radio button and then it will basically select that. You can select the height, how high you want it to grow, and it will grow very similar to sugarcane. So that would be that one. Uh, there is the other one, which is double plant, which is very similar to how double ferns, double grass, double flowers, stuff like that are all uh, situated. You also have an additional property for selecting what kind of double plant it is, whether it's a flower or a grass block so like a grass uh, grass and fern and things like that so you can choose between those two options uh, on the far left uh, is one called uh, a static plant uh, this is uh, basically just a single plant similar to flowers um, there's also grass as well that you can select uh, you can basically select if there is a um, stew uh, effect that it gives so you can select your custom um, custom uh, af status effects and stuff like that for your potions and stuff like that if you wanted to add that uh, there's also the stew duration how long it will last I'm assuming this is probably in ticks uh, most likely it's in ticks it doesn't really say so most likely it's in ticks so 100 would be five seconds if you wanted it to blast 15 seconds then you would set 500 and I think it's 500 yeah it's pretty pretty sure it's 500 might be 30 ticks I'm not sure uh, but you know uh, there's 20 ticks per second so um, you would have to calculate that on what you need all right so that that's the basic thing uh, depending on which one you select uh, there will be different options for your uh, plant texture model, which uh, if you're using double plant, you'll have the bottom texture that you'll need to select and your top texture. If you're using growable plant or static plant, you just have the main texture. Uh, you may also notice that uh, some of the settings over on this side are disabled uh, when you're actually going to select the plant and stuff like that. Uh, mostly the model and um, the model uh, the plant model itself so you can't select the plant model for double ones you can select it for the uh, growable plants and you can select it for static plants uh, you might also notice underneath that you have the plant item texture you can select a plant item texture so it would be very similar to how saplings or flowers have a single texture uh, rather than show a 3d model of the actual plant uh, that's basically what this allows you to do the plant particle texture this is basically the particles that will display when you break the block so you can basically set a map or something that like a texture that you want the particles to actually break from so you can do that as well 
Uh, this can be any type of shape. It doesn't have to be the same shape as the plant or anything like that. It would be easier to use the same texture as the plant because it has all the colors, but uh, it's up to you what you want to do with that. Uh, tint index, uh, this has to do with um, if the block is actually tinted. So if you want to make the plant tinted uh, similar to how grass, leaves, uh, things like that are basically set up, then you want to check this box and select the tint model. Uh, this will require you to have a grayscale texture um, for your actual uh, plant itself. Uh, you can use custom models, but it's a little bit trickier to uh, set up. I might have done a tutorial on that a while ago. I can't remember what version it's for, but uh, you have everything in here that you basically need. So grass would most likely be the one that you would want for the um, actual uh, tint index. So there's that. There's also foliage, birch foliage, spruce foliage, default foliage. So there's a whole bunch of different ones as well as water and stuff as well. All right, so we'll start with a static plant and then we'll move over to the uh, other three. So it shouldn't be two different properties, I don't think. It might be the same. Bounding box. Just going to quickly check to see if the properties are all the same. Yeah, it should be all the same. Actually, we should be able to cover it just straight through then. So bounding box is basically the hitbox for the actual block. Uh, you can enable this to basically set the um, the hitbox where the block is. If you want to disable the model offset, then you can dis disable that as well. Uh, this will allow you to um, keep the bounding box in the exact center of the block rather than have it kind of go with the rest of the model. So you have those options. Uh, basically how this works is um, this number is at the very bottom corner of the hitbox where this is on the opposite corner and if you wanted to shrink the bounding box and you would lower this number and increase this number and this would basically allow you to kind of group them together on different sizes and stuff like that. Uh, this is per pixel so um, if you wanted to do something like uh, one block around the actual thing. Now if you have a custom model as well you can open up the model in like Notepad++ and then it should list the um, actual design. I might actually have something that I can sh demonstrate that with right now. So I'll do that right now. Uh, I'll just go into portal gates and then uh, let's see here or would that be assets, models, and then I have a few different things. So this one, we'll open that up, and then we'll bring that over to here. So basically, if you scroll down, um, there's obviously just one element for this, but you want to pay attention to the to and from uh, access. This will give you the exact coordinates. So two, it would be basically the um, 16 maximum condition and from would be your minimum condition so in the slab case it would be 16 16 and 4 right here so that would be the properties i would need for that the 00, zero is already set to the right amount so that's basically the easiest way to actually go through it you just go through your elements tab and then find all your elements. Now the ones with rotations are a little bit different. It's a little bit harder to do rotations. I usually just leave those ones out. But um, yeah, that's just a quick tip for you. All right, pro uh, properties. We have the in-game display name. This is the name given to the item. So basically if you want to give the item a name, uh, something different than your registry name, then you can do that. Uh, the creative tab this is where it's going to be located under there's a few different options for that you can also select custom creative tabs if you want hardness and resistance generally plants are basically have zero resistance or zero hardness so they can be instantly clicked and instantly uh, broken uh, jump factor uh, this I think has to do with um, how much the um, player actually jumps like if they jump really much then it would be similar to um like slime if it was like a higher number if it's um i don't know i haven't really actually used it much uh the honey 
uh, jump factor is 0 0.5. So I guess it's very similar to how honey or slime blocks work and um, honey blocks, I guess. I don't know. Uh, speed factor, this basically controls how fast you, the player go. The default value is 1 and 1 for both of them. Uh, luminescence, uh, if you want the entity to actually, uh, or not the entity, the um, block to actually glow, like a, like a torch or something like that, you can set this value to zero between 0 and 15. Uh, eminescent glow, this is very similar to how magma blocks actually work. They kind of hold the uh, value of the light level uh, around them, so... Um, if you put a torch down right next to it, it's going to glow very similar to the torch. If you put something like a redstone torch, it's going to kind of mimic that um, emissive rendering glow effect. So there's those. Uh, salt is plant solid. So this I actually don't know about. Um, selected, able to move through. Entities, entities won't be able to move through. So I guess it has to do with um, making the plant like a solid block compared to, um, I don't know, something like uh, regular grass or something like that. It probably has something to do with the hitbox. I'm not sure. If not, then it's probably just something to avoid AI rendering or like AI pathfinding or something like that. Custom drops, these are very, very similar to the uh, block properties. Uh, you have your custom drop. You can select whatever item you want. You can leave it disabled if you don't want it. You can disable or set the amount of drops through the uh, selection up here. Uh, for loot tables, uh, you would basically go ahead and create a loot table for this. If you wanted to use loot tables instead, you would check that one. And then if you go in here, there is a... Um, Thing right here it's a little bit small to actually see but uh, it's called um, blocks slash my plant now this is basically what you basically put in your loot table uh, parts I'll quickly create a loot table to kind of demonstrate that so you would need to go to loot table which is under L loot table we'll just call it something And then what you would want to do is you want to paste that value. So it would be blocks and then your registry name for your block. So this would be my underscore plant. And then you want to make sure it's under the mod namespace and then it's a block type. So basically what that will do is it will allow you to set a loot table for that it doesn't actually link to it it's already linked through the property name and everything like that so as long as you have it under this category the uh, blocks slash my plant or whatever category that you have your registry under and then your mod namespace and then under the block type so this will allow you to basically generate loot from a uh, loop from a loot table instead of having it um, drop a, a specific item. Uh, create a pick item. This is basically the item when you use the middle mouse button it will basically select that instead so you can select that. Is block unbreakable? Uh, this is basically if you want to make it similar to bedrock and is plant replaceable? This will act like grass or ferns, uh, where you can basically uh, place a block over it and it will basically go ahead and remove the block without giving any particular drop. Uh, very similar to basic stuff like foliage and stuff like that, Most, mostly grass and uh, ferns. But uh, you can also, like if you were to leave it disabled, then it would be more similar to flowers uh, where you have to actually break the block instead. And then you have your sound properties. Again, you can set the built-in ones if you want, or you can mix and match by selecting custom sound set and then basically selecting them from the list. You can go onto Minecraft Wiki and see what blocks actually play which and what their values are. We'll cover that just right now. So if we go open up Minecraft Wiki,
add, then we'll go ahead and just uh, search up a random block. I'll uh, we'll go with slime block. And we'll select slime block. And then if you scroll down, usually there is a sound system for the Java edition. You can see the name registry for the actual thing that you want to search for in that little list. And then a little bit further over, you have your volume and pitch. Uh, these are generally uh, used for things in your uh, procedures. But uh, if you want to like run it through a procedure, then this is the pitch and volume that you will need for that. Um, it's very handy for actually creating the um, sounds directly in procedures and stuff instead. So there's always that. But uh, this has to do with the sound properties uh, for the basic stuff. So if you want to break uh, step, place, hit, and fall sounds, those are the ones that you can customize. All right, advanced properties. Uh, this has to do with has block entity. So if it has a block entity, then you'll be able to use MBD, MBT data. Uh, only, if, only enable this if you want to actually use MBT. Uh, it can lag if you enable a tile entity like this, so you might not want to do that um, for all your plants and stuff, only if you need to. Um, force plant ticking, so basically this will, I believe, uh, some plants naturally tick, but some don't. Uh, check this parameter to force ticking in all cases, so if you wanted to make it tick in all cases, then you can do that. Uh, plant color on map. So this is basically the map color that your plant will be basically displayed as. Uh, generally, plants are displayed as foliage. So if you click on foliage, that's the default one that they usually are under. Uh, plant flammability. This is how flammable it is. Uh, I'm not sure about flowers. I don't know if they are flammable or not. Let's just do a quick check. Don't think they are. Flammability. Oh, they are. Uh, 60 and... Yeah, 60. So, so basically, uh, you would set the flammability to 60 for a regular flower. I think grass is probably 100. And then fire spreading. Or maybe it's that one. I'm not sure. Flammability. Uh, planks. Yeah, I'm not sure why that one's like that. Fire spreading is 60 though, so there's always that. Um, the fire spreading basically allows it to spread to other blocks. It uh, basically acts like a source of uh, fire, where the um, flammability allows you to uh, select the um, the uh, how probable it w of it catching fire is. The AI path is basically how entities walk around the block. Um, for things like nether or wither flowers or whatever they're called, then you might want to set something up where they kind of avoid that. You could probably do something similar to a rail or you could do uh, blocked. I think those are uh, options as well. Um, rails I know are basically prevent entities from walking over, so you could use rails. Uh, the random model offset, this basically has to do with the, um, with plants and stuff. Uh, if you have them in the world, you'll notice that they're kind of shifted on different axes of that block. Uh, this has to do with that basic, basic feature. You can set none, which will disable it. X and Z, which will just allow it to do, um, north, south, east, and west, or east and west. And then with the Y1, it will allow you to do up and down as well. So there's all those different factors. Uh, plant type. So this uh, basically has to do with the generation where it's going to basically generate. Uh, planes are basically like regular grass flowers and stuff like that. Desert are things like dead bushes, things like that. Beaches, not really sure what about beaches um, for generation, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Caves, obviously, and cave water is water. And then you have, oh, beaches might actually be um, sugarcane, very similar to sugarcane generation. Uh, water would be things like coral reefs, stuff like that. 
nether would be the nether plants and then crop which i don't really think there's actual use for crop but um it would be used for like crop type generation i'm not sure how that actually worked because uh technically the village is generated with the crops already set up so it's not like you can just quickly replace it like that so i'm not sure about that but um might have some different properties but there's not enough information on it anyhow uh there's those and then you have optional list of blocks a block can be placed on to uh, slash grow on so basically if you want to restrict it to certain blocks like uh, sugarcane where it's restricted to things like grass and sand then you can basically select those blocks in this list and then additional placing slash growing condition this basically allows it to um, allows you to basically adjust the the condition a little bit further whether if there's through procedures and stuff like that. So if you wanted to make a procedure to test uh, for something like if it's D, then you could do something like that if you wanted to. Um, we can just quickly um, test if the, there's one for is D. Is D and provided world. And then you would basically go ahead, place that like that. And then you would return true. So return, wrong return a little bit cut close to the same color so you want the this one right here and then you want to return true and then if it fails and you want to return false so basically it would only be able be able to be uh placed during the daytime uh this will also affect um the growth as well so uh if it's during the night then it would basically pop off and it wouldn't be able to be placed there so make sure to design that in a way that it won't mess with your actual system so again these are your uh triggers so basically uh right plant when plant right clicked you can set up right click events but when plant added this is a little bit different when player places the block i'm not sure when block is placed so these two are a little bit different uh, this will actually be when the block is actually added, where this one has to do with the entity placing it. Uh, destroyed by player and destroyed by explosion are basically when, obviously, if the, the plant actually starts to be destroyed kind of thing. So if it's actually destroyed, then it will do something. Uh, start to destroy, this has to do with an entity. So if the entity starts to mine the block, then this will take effect. Uh, mob slash player collides with plant so basically if they go inside the hitbox something will happen this would be basically used for if the um, very similar to how uh, wither flowers or whatever are set up so you could basically have damage applied to them if they go into it uh, client display random tick so this basically has to do with running it on client side only uh, you could do things with particles and stuff like that through this. If you wanted to, uh, you would use the particle blocks. I'll demonstrate that quickly. So basically what you would want to do is you would want to run it on client side only. To do that, what you would do is scroll down client side and you just place that without the not statement. And then you would basically go to world properties or world management, pardon me. And then you would go ahead and select, um, where is it? think there is single particles I'm not sure if single particles will actually work uh, it might be one of these are on server side so it's either single particles or the other one which is the group particles so it's one of those two uh, you would select your particles and then you would basically okay so this one actually says it's on server side so you can't use that one but you can use the single particle one and it will basically generate on the client side uh, like it like regular particles and stuff like that so there's that if you wanted to do something specific with that you'd have to set the coordinates and all that other stuff but that's basically what you would want to do all right with that being said uh, there is entity walks on blocks now this is kind of counterintuitive if it's a plant because you can't really walk on the block you can walk in the block but it's not really on the block um if you, you set it to a solid i guess if it changes the properties to make it a solid then it might 
play effect, but I'm not sure. Um, on block hit with projectile, this would probably have to do if the block is shot with something. I'm not sure what would happen with it specifically. I don't know any cases that basically have a plant to do that, but there's that option. It'd probably have something some type of event that would play when a particle or projectile actually hit it. And then you have when neighbor block changes. So anything around the block connected to the block, if something changes with those uh, blocks, then this procedure will run. Update tick will always run on a loop. Again, you will have to enable plant ticking for that in order to make sure that it will run properly. And then the last one, I think that's actually all of them. Yep, we covered all of them then. All right, so there's those ones. And then generation, so this has to do with the spawn fr frequency, so how common it is on the chunks. Uh, patch size controls how many flowers have a probability of generating in that particular patch or on that chunk. So 64 would be pretty high, honestly for five per chunk so there would be a lot of um, flowers to actually generate because it's going to make five attempts on one chunk to actually spawn that so depending on where you're spawning it it might vary where you'll need these settings uh, generate plant on any height so basically this will allow you to kind of generate it above and below ground uh, depending on your uh, system like your generation type if we go back to generation uh, this would be probably best if it was something like a flower or a grass. I think grass allows you to bring it underneath. Uh, there's also um, the yeah grass. I think allow. I think grass also allows you to generate underneath as well. So you have that. And then basically, if you wanted to generate it underground and stuff, then you would basically select any height, and then it would kind of generate underneath. Uh, there's uh, spawn these in dimensions and then you can select what dimensions you want to generate it in so you have your custom dimensions as well as your the v vanilla ones that are listed uh, restrict to biome so if you wanted to restrict it to a specific biome then you could basically select what biome that you want to uh, generate it in there's a list of vanilla ones your custom ones will show up at the top there and then additional generation conditions so basically this controls if um, Unlike the other condition, this one here for placing slash growing, this will uh, control whether the plant is actually generated rather than basically placed on. So you can basically control where it actually spawns um, th through this condition. Again, it's the same system as before. Um, you would basically just create a return statement and stuff like that, and you can basically do that. So that's basically that for plants. There's nothing else to cover. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.